Hi, all. Welcome to our session on youth making their futures. Uh, we did research looking at 3D printing, augmented reality, and STEAM education. I conducted this work along with uh, my colleagues, Tracy Hunter Doniger, Nenid Radakovich, and my name is Ian O'Byrne. We are all educators and researchers at the College of Charleston. In our research question, we looked at reality pedagogy from Chris Emden and thought about how do students in undergrad and graduate level educational programs view the role of this in teaching, learning, and assessment, and then how do they operationalize, how they plan and operationalize this in a learning environment with students. Our theoretical perspectives that we use to frame this work, first off, we were uh, guided by, we we're inspired by culturally relevant pedagogy from Lads and Billings. Uh, we also focused, as indicated earlier, on reality pedagogy. Uh, we focused on transdisciplinary education. How do the how does this work connect across multiple intersections of our content areas? And then also divergent thinking to think about how students may think in a nonlinear fashion as they create and teach. In the methods, uh, participants and analysis, first of all, most importantly, this was uh, work that was conducted with pre-service teachers. So we had students that were acting as not only our students, but we we're mentoring them into the process of research as they were learning how to teach and develop teaching materials and work with students. The data consisted of videos of them teaching in the classroom, interviews with teachers, interviews with our participants, uh, artifacts constructed by participants, photographs, field notes, student researcher journals. Uh, the participants were, most importantly, 10 children from a STEAM summer camp, ages uh, 8 to 10, uh, 8 to 10, 7 female, 3 males. 20% of the children were for, from Title I schools on scholarship. Our teacher researchers are 3 females, 1 male, all undergrad aged 20 to 26. In the analysis, uh, we mentored students in the data collection and the analysis. They reviewed the data they met, discussed, and agreed upon the codes. We were involved in this process all throughout the, uh, the work. Uh, we had triangulation of data to identify patterns and, th and trends in the data set, and we used open coding and then axial coding to make sense of the findings. Right, and so some of the findings that we found were culturally relevant, where um, Philip Simmons, even though he is a known artist and his gate work is known throughout Charleston, most of the students, whether it was the college age students or the children, knew of the gates, but they didn't know of the artists. And so we thought it would be very important that we brought that into the lessons. And that, that was one of the things that the findings showed that the more the students learn, the more they um, gravitated to understanding the, the cultural relevancy of this African-American artist. Um, the transdisciplinarity part of the lesson was that it spanned across the curriculum. And so having our pre-service teachers focus on these different lessons or these different components of this whole lesson showed the value of how many lessons crossed over throughout the whole thing. Divergent thinking was hugely important because when the art components are included, you need to think beyond just rote memory and lectures and it allowed the students to have a little bit more autonomy when they were learning this lesson and it provided a little bit of stress for students, but then it, it grew into a great project towards the end. Um, lastly, the findings were that the teacher, researcher, learner, the, our students at the college, um, as they were researching what lesson to do as they were figuring out what to do as a teacher, they were also learning in the process. And so these three components kept working together throughout the whole thing. And here are some photographs of what we were working on. So we showed them pictures of some of the gates that are located in Charleston. And we talked about the symmetry. We talked about the math components of this. We talked about how you can flip and turn an image and it can look the same. And that's all part of the design or the engineering of these things too. 
This also was guided by our focus on transdisciplinarity, where we identified content that was out in the real world. It was interesting that a lot of the participants, meaning the youth that were involved in this research, they saw these gates, but didn't know the real history. And then also many of uh, some of our student researchers or teachers, they saw the gates, but they didn't know the history behind it. So it gave us a window into future areas for exploration. And here are some sketches. So we began with the students creating an image and then flipping it on the screen so they could have it um, actually be gates that would uh, mirror each other. And so they sketched it first. And then on the next picture, you can see where they're rolling uh, Play-Doh to go over it, to increase the size of it, to um, create an elevated version of it so it would help with the um, 3D printing. So students created these mock-ups in sketches or Play-Doh, scanned them with iPad apps, uh, manipulated and modified those scans in their iPad apps, and then ultimately we sent them out to be printed on a 3D printer. Yep, and these are that's the image of a end result of one. So hopefully you value our talk today. We are interested in learning more about your thoughts. Thank you. Thanks.